Hey everyone, my name is Miranda and I'm from the Swirly Do's Education Design Team and I'm here today to show a tutorial on how to create just a fun little mixed media page in your Prima album that you get in this month's Technique Kit. And in that album you get three of these transparency pocket pages. And I mean, I think you can put your photos in there, you can do anything you want with it, but I wanted to use that as the base for a layout. I love working with acetate. So, um, and then whatever paper you have behind it, it will show through. So it's a really cool effect. And this is what it looks like without anything behind it. So it's just really cool, funky little page, lots of splatters and stuff going on. We're going to use the silk glaze and the tea time paper. And we're going to use a little banner out of the um, packaging. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to take our page here and we're going to use that Luminart Silk Acrylic Glaze that comes in your kit. Really fun stuff to play with. And we're just going to use that as kind of a background for everything else to sit on. Here you can see it on the bottle how shimmery it is. It's absolutely gorgeous. And just take a paintbrush and we're just going to lightly coat our paintbrush with some and we're just going to feather this down in one big stroke down here. Just like that. And then we're going to do the same thing to the top. Just feather this up. And then I'm going to go out to the side as well. Just like that. And just kind of go back over it to blend it all in really well. There in the center it's going to get covered up with our pictures and stuff anyway. But just make sure the ends of it are nice and blended and smooth. And for some reason when I do these um, feather type strokes I have to do it coming downward. I'm not able to do it going up for some reason. Okay. And you want to let this dry completely. Um, you can't really dry heat set this page because it's going to kind of melt the, the plastic. You can heat set it a little bit if you just want to, you know, barely tap it or hold it from a distance. But if you do too much, it'll start to burn the page and it'll all curl up on you. Um, so just let it air dry. And I'm also going to add some splatters of the primary elements that I have mixed into a shimmer mist. I just put some primary elements, a little bit of gum arabic for a binder, and then just water. And you can see all the mica powder down there in the bottom. So you just want to give it a good shake and mix it up. And then I'm also going to use some of the gesso that comes in the kit. But the first thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to randomly kind of splatter some of the Glimmer Mist onto here. And I'm going to hold it at a distance so that it just kind of mists like that. Not a big defined area. Just kind of goes over the whole thing like that. I like the little droplets. So that's what we're going for there. And then you're also going to take your gesso and a paintbrush. Let me grab my paintbrush really quickly. And what we're going to do is we're going to get some of the gesso on our paintbrush. Just get a decent amount on there. And then just take your finger and flick the paintbrush toward the page. So just kind of going like that. And just keep dipping it and flicking it until you get the amount you want on there. And then you can let all of this dry at one time so you don't have to wait for the layers to dry. And sometimes when I do this, um, when I'm cleaning up, I have the paint everywhere. It kind of splatters all over the place, so just be mindful of that. I'm a very messy crafter. Okay, so that's enough for me. Just add as much or as little as you like on there and then I'll show you what that looks like. You can just see the little splatters of the paint on there. So it's just a really fun way to kind of add some more texture and a little funky element. So just let this dry. Okay while you're waiting on that to dry you can go ahead and do some of your prep work. In the tea time paper there is one sheet that is all florals. This is the last of mine. I've cut them all out so I can't show you which one but I'm sure you'll know the whole thing is covered with these flowers. So I've just fussy cut out some of the little clusters 
And a little tip I have for fussy cutting is whenever I'm done, I take um, my Distress Ink in black and I just go around all the edges of it. And it just gets rid of that clean kind of factory edge and just distresses it a little bit and gives some more definition. So anytime I fussy cut, I usually do that and it just kind of brings it out more. In the packaging for the Mixed Media album, you get these banners. So you can cut these triangles out. I just cut four out, two of each kind in this. And then I just distressed up the edges with my scissors. And then I'm also going to tear some strips of paper out of the other pink page in the um, Prima Tea Time. So I'm just going to tear another little strip out. Just tear a couple out in different sizes. You're going to want to get another sheet of your paper just for a photo mat and just kind of tear it a little bit bigger than your photo is. I've taken a piece of cheesecloth. You can use muslin, any kind of fabric you have in your stash. I love working with cheesecloth. And I'm going to dye that with my primary elements. And I want it a little bit darker than the spray that came on here. So I'm going to add some alcohol ink to it. Um, if you have alcohol ink, I love working with it. So I already have my Mr. Bottle filled up with the primary elements. I'm going to give it a little shake, and then I'm just going to add a couple of droplets of the black alcohol ink in there just to kind of darken it up just a little bit. Just a few drops in there. And then just give it a really good shake. Mix it all up. Okay, and then we're going to dye the cheesecloth with that. So I usually just set it in a bowl. Um, I work with these styrofoam bowls a lot. They're really easy for cleanup and um, helps get a good coating on there when you spray. So you can see it's much darker now with that black alcohol ink in there. And you can add as much as you want. When I did my cover, I just played around with it and I added a lot of black alcohol ink and it made it almost as dark as the um, glimmer mist that I usually buy. So it was a really pretty effect. And you can also mix the primary elements with your existing glimmer mist and it'll give it a really cool two-toned effect. So that's what your cheesecloth will look like and yes you're going to stain up your hands but it's all in fun. Just set the bowl to the side and let that dry and then we're also going to do some masking with our Prima brick mask on top of our little page here. So I'm going to go ahead and get that out and when I was doing the other one I usually use a spatula knife to um, spread my gesso but because this is such a smooth surface it kind of spread underneath the mask so this time around I'm going to use just a sponge brush to kind of go over it so I'm just going to set this down here in the bottom part I'm going to take a foam brush or any paintbrush will work and then I'm just going to blot it on in just a random fashion And you might have to go a little heavier on top of that silk acrylic glaze. Just peel it off carefully. And then again, you got to wait for this to dry. That's the joy of mixed media. You have all these layers going on and they all have to dry. But this is what it looks like so far. Okay, and I'm just going to let this dry and then we'll continue. And the next thing we're going to do is create just a little glaze. And we're going to end up dropping it onto our page to create some runs. I like to do this a lot. And what I typically use, if I'm not using the spray bottle of the Glimmer Mist that I'm using, I'll use this little squeezy. I mean, they're for babies. You can get them at Walmart anywhere. Um, this is what I usually use. But what we're going to do is we're going to take a little bit of our primary elements. This stuff is so versatile. And we're going to put a little scoop in here. Just get some on your palette knife and scoop a little in there. And then um, you're going to need a binder for this. I'm going to use gum arabic in liquid form. I could not get it in powder form. If you do not have access to this, just use hairspray. Um, and it works really well. But just put some gum arabic in there. You want to do like equal parts of the gum arabic to the pigment powder. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of water. Not a lot because I want it kind of thick. 
Maybe like two and a half squirts, I think is good. Then I'm just going to mix it up with a paintbrush. Look at all the shimmer in there. Well, I don't think the camera's going to pick it up, but it is incredible. Super, super, super pretty. And because we added little water and a lot of the gum arabic, it is keeping more of the um, mica powder color as opposed to the pigment. It's more of a golden bronze than the green. Just mix it up really good. Then I'm just going to use my little um, squeezy and I'm just going to squeeze some of the liquid in there. Not a lot. I'm going to go over here to my page. I'm just going to drip some out and I'm going to let it run down my page. I want some of them longer than others. Just do as many or as little as you want. You can kind of help move it along like that. Okay, and then you need to let this dry because um, it's very wet and again, you can't heat set it. So this part might take a while. But I have found too, I did this on another page and when I heat set it, it came out a little different than when I just let it dry on its own. So I definitely recommend if you're going to do this with the primary elements to just let it dry on its own. So now we're going to start adding our picture and stuff on here. I've went around the edges of mine with some gesso just to give it a more shabby look. And I'm just going to attach my photo with some ATG tape onto my little photo mat here. Just like that and I'm going to go around the edges of this too with a little bit of gesso. I pretty much go over everything with gesso. Okay, I'm going to use ATG tape again to glue this down. Okay, and then just find a spot for it here on your layout. I'm going to put it about right there so that my cheesecloth can go under that. Okay. And then here's our cheesecloth dried off that we have dyed with the um, Glimmer Mist we made. I'm just going to play around with the placement of this and see where I want it to go. I just want it here kind of covering up where those drips are so it almost looks like they're bleeding out of the cheesecloth. So something like that. And be very careful if you decide to use hot glue on this because it will burn through your page. So just use very, very minimal amounts of the hot glue. You don't want it to burn, and I'm actually going to try to put my little dabs on the paper photo mat instead of on the transparency sheet. Or you can just put it on the cheesecloth like that and just let it cool off for a couple of seconds before you push it down to your sheet. And then when you're doing this page, if you're completing your whole album, you'll want to mirror the same thing on the back of this layout because it is clear. Unless you adhere another sheet to the back of it that you want it to kind of show through. But, um, you know, you've got all these elements that will show through on the other side. You'll just need to put a photo mat here and kind of mimic the same thing on the other side so that you cover up all your glue marks and the backs of the papers and everything like that. But all your mixed media work is pretty much already done for you. Okay. So I got a cheesecloth like that. And I'm going to take those little fussy cut roses that I cut out of the paper. I'm just going to play around with where I want those to go. I'm not quite sure. Maybe some coming out over there. I'm just going to use my ATG again. I'm going to tuck it in there, like that, and then we got one more little piece, I think I'll put that one up there. I love fussy cutting, the pa any paper that has a lot of elements that you can cut out, it's just super, super fun, very time consuming, but so worth it. Okay, so I've got those up there. Now we've got the little banner that um, come in the packaging. I was going to put it down here, but I almost think I don't want to cover up my drips now. So I'm just going to play and see. Maybe I'll have it in the cheesecloth a little bit. 
yeah, I think I'll do it like that. Just going up the side right there. Just going to add a little bit of hot glue. Okay, now I'm going to take those little strips of paper that I had tore out of the pink page. I'm just going to kind of adhere them randomly in here in different places. Kind of tear this one a little shorter. Maybe I'll put that one there and have that one kind of on the photo a little bit. Then I think I want this one down here on the bottom. Okay, so that is pretty much it, y'all. You get a fun little page, and as soon as I saw the transparency sheet, I knew I wanted to do something different besides just setting, you know, um, some photos in there. So this is what it looks like. You can see all the splatters and the glimmer mist, and I really love letting this air dry and getting that beautiful reddish tint in there. It's really, really pretty. And we've got the acrylic silk glaze kind of brush stroked out there. It's almost see-through. Oh, and then you can see what it looks like with more paper behind it. Just shows through. And I was also thinking it would be really nice to have it behind one of the resist canvas patterns. It'd be really, really pretty. So I hope you guys get some ideas and just play around with your album. And I hope you enjoyed this start to finish video. Thanks for watching. Bye.